Hi, this is Dr. Lisa with the Pet Butler team, and today we're going to be talking about some general care for your dog. Um, we want to focus on two systems today, both the oral, the dental system here, and then the oral, A-U-R-A-L, or the ears. Um, and um, both of those areas are both really important um, in maintaining so we can prevent disease and also catching disease, stopping it in its tracks. So first we're going to talk about the mouth. Um, what we typically see in dogs that aren't receiving good oral care or hygiene is we're going to have problems with something called gingivitis or periodontal disease. And that's basically inflammation of the gum tissue and the tissues that surround the tooth to keep it anchored in place. Um, there are four different stages of gingivitis and periodontal disease progressing from one to four through the uh, degree of severity. And what it can culminate in is we'll see deposits, um, plaque deposits that become mineralized, recession of the gums, we can see bone loss even in serious cases, uh, leading to extractions and even blood-borne uh, bacteria, which can cause problems in some of our end organs like the heart, the kidneys, and the liver. So it's a real serious thing to um, consider and preventative maintenance, preventative care is the best thing that we can do um, to ward off the gingivitis and the periodontal disease that we often see in pets. So we're going to talk about um, some of the products that we use and then we'll give you a little demonstration as to how they're used. Um, the easiest thing to do to help prevent periodontal and gingivitis, uh, periodontal disease and gingivitis is to be feeding your pet uh, maybe a 25% to 75% ratio of a dental health type food. So those, that kibble is designed to be a little more abrasive. Your pet will sink the teeth into the kibble and then that action of um, that abrasive action actually helps to remove some of the plaque before it can harden into the tartar. Um, the second best thing we can do, sometimes we'll give some treats that provide the same type of action. Uh, we also advocate using an oral rinse that can be squirted along the gum line and this helps to kill any bacteria. So. Uh, preventing the advancement of the plaque and, and calculus development, or you can add it to their water bowl and that low level of antimicrobial again helps to thwart the, the growth of the oral bacteria. Um, the best thing that we can do for our pets when treating their, their mouths and, and maintaining them is to brush their teeth. So most pets um, can get used to the idea of having a toothbrush in their mouth. Um, their toothpaste are certainly not like human toothpaste. We don't get the, the minty flavor. Um, most of the time they're coming in flavors like salmon or chicken, which dogs typically like. Uh, we've got the poultry flavor right here. We've got the fish flavor right here. Um, and I'll show you how to use these products in your, in your pet's mouth. But typically what we're doing is we're gonna do a slow introduction um, whenever we're trying a new procedure on our pet that goes for any kind of grooming or maintenance procedures too. So we wanna make it a positive experience. We're gonna start just by introducing our finger into their mouths and rubbing it along the gum line, followed by letting them taste the, the dental toothpaste. Again, it tastes like a treat to them. So most times they're gonna like that. And then we'll follow up with introducing the toothbrush. Usually we're gonna use a soft bristle toothbrush and we're gonna put the toothpaste on the toothbrush, introduce that. Uh, we'll do that for a few days until they're used to having that, that item in their mouth. And then finally, we'll advance to using the toothbrush with the toothpaste and rubbing in a circular motion at about 45 degrees to the gum line. That's gonna help eliminate any of that uh, bacteria, the plaque that's starting to develop there. We usually wanna maintain um, that brushing motion, the circular and then the back and forth motion along the tooth and the gum line for about 30 seconds on each side of the mouth. So those are the best, the best things that we can do to keep our mouths, uh, pet's mouths clean, smelling fresh, and like I said, more importantly, preventing ultimately systemic disease, tooth loss, pain um, in their mouths and um, preventing the need for anesthesia and um, dental cleanings under anesthesia. So moving on to the pet's ears. Now pet's ears, we see a lot of problems, uh, especially in dogs with floppy ears, dogs that go swimming or have uh, moisture introduced in their ear canals. Some dogs, like the Golden Retriever, uh, have hereditary issues with ear disease and ear inflammation. We also see dogs that have allergic disease, whether it's to environmental allergens or to food that can develop problems with their ears and infection. So we want to stay on top of it. It's good to get, again, into a regular maintenance cycle. We usually are, are brushing the teeth daily. If we can clean the ears weekly or after a bath or swimming, 
that's the schedule that we really want to stick to. So we're going to start just by um, inspecting the ear canal visually. Um, then we're going to use a flushing solution. So it's best to get advice from your veterinarian as to which solution is going to be best for your pet, depending on their anatomy, depending on um, what their history is with ear disease. And we use these products to rinse the ear canal. Um, we don't want to use water because again, that's just going to promote uh, the growth of bacteria. So usually these are uh, solutions that have a specialized pH, sometimes even some additives to decrease the, the growth of bacteria or yeast. And we're going to uh, make sure that we've got gloves on hand, some cotton balls. I like to use long handled uh, cotton swabs also just to clean the creases in the exterior part of the ear canal that I can see. And then we'll start by taking the ear wash. We actually put it into the dog's ear canal. The ear canal is shaped like a big L, so you're not going to hit the eardrum. Um, and then we massage the base of the ear for about 30 seconds or so to loosen up any of that debris. Uh, it is a messy procedure. Sometimes it's a smelly procedure, especially if your dog has uh, ear disease, ear infection going on. Um, so we're going to make sure to do it outside in a place we don't mind getting a little messy. And after we massage the ear canal to loosen up any debris, any foreign objects that may be in there, sometimes animals that have parasite infections, um, we're cleaning out some of that debris as well. Then we're going to um, let them shake their heads and we're going to follow up with the cotton balls just to get out any of the, the moisture that's remaining in there and any of the debris, like I said, that might be loosened up. Um, Wax is normal. It's not uncommon to get a little bit of earwax out every week. If you're getting a foul smelling debris, something that looks dark um, or that looks like pus, you definitely want to call your veterinarian for further instructions because we likely have an infection going on. So, um, so yeah, again, so we're going to let them shake it out. And once a week typically is enough just for maintenance. Pets that have infections that are active may need more regular uh, washing before putting in medication. Then we're talking about a daily process until we get all that debris cleaned out. So thanks for listening to me talk to you about your dog's oral and oral health. Uh, next time we'll be talking about more grooming tips that include nails and hair coat maintenance. But by managing the outside of your pet, ultimately you're contributing to general wellness and health on the inside of your pet too. So have a great day.